I'd like to point out that now I'm a good girl and not a guy, in, in case anyone was perhaps confused. Thank you. So I'm here today to talk to you about some scary things. I'd like to start with a story. On Christmas Eve, two years ago, a surprising denial of service attack disrupted the website of the California-based Bank of the West. As this attack was happening and technicians scrambled to solve the issue, something else was happening in the shadows. What was happening, in fact, was a silent, quick, yet deliberate account takeover, siphoning out money from the corporate accounts of one construction company into the accounts of 62 unsuspecting money mules all across America. In just a short time, almost a million dollars were lost under the, the cover of the clever denial of service attack. And the money mules who had received it figured out they had made easy money working from home as advertised. But the people who really made the easy money are the criminal gang behind this attack. And that was just one drop in an ocean because they've already made more than $100 million in similar account takeover attacks in a short period of time. Now, they've achieved this amazing financial success with the help of Zeus, not the Greek god on the Olympus, but rather the unofficial king of financial malware. In the past few years, Zeus has positioned itself as the most successful financial crime work kit on the underground market. And the cool thing about Zeus is that you can easily buy it and then tweak it, adapt it, customize it for your own criminal gang's needs. And that is exactly what the guys behind that attack did. Their Zeus variant is known as Game Over. That's because it used a unique decentralized architecture and it specifically targeted financial institutions from all over the world. They came up with a clever way to automate wire transfers from leading banks such as these and quickly into the accounts of their assisting money mules. Now, they had a backup plan in case the first one didn't work out. A secondary revenue stream, if you will. This was the crypto locker scheme. The crypto locker would take control of entire computers by encrypting their hard drives. It would then request the users for a financial fee in order to get the files back. That's called ransomware in my industry. And in just 10 months, they made more than $30 million when victims paid their ransoms, some of them with bitcoins, I might add. So there's some good news to this story. And that is that last month, the UK's National Crime Agency, collaborating with the FBI and a multitude of private companies from all over the world, had managed to temporarily disrupt the Game Over and Crypto Locker campaigns. But the bad news are, this is just one criminal campaign out of many. And they are all creative and innovative, and they target financial institutions. So we tend to think of these criminals as opportunistic basement-dwelling hackers. But the reality is quite different. They are, in fact, businessmen, extremely organized, surprisingly sophisticated, and more than anything, motivated and undeterred in their efforts to come up with new ways to digitize and monetize your assets. So it seems this generation of criminal cyber entrepreneurs has learned the trick. Innovate, automate, iterate, diversify, continuously create new business engines and growth models. Things like malvertising, which are making them huge profits. Malvertising is placing malicious ads on well-known brand websites. It's an effort, and a successful one, to gain millions of infected machines in a matter of a few days. And these ads have shown up anywhere from the homepage of Yahoo to the front page of the New York Times. Surprisingly, you are in fact more likely to get infected by a piece of financial malware 
by clicking on one of these ads than by visiting an adult content website. So this is the reality. And the criminals are very happy and eager to use the news with current events like the FIFA World Cup as a fantastic opportunity to lure in unsuspecting sports fans to click on their advertisements and malicious applications that would supposedly let you watch the games, but in fact, get you very quickly infected with one of their Trojan horses. Now here's why you should care. These innocent victims, people from all over the world, browsing and surfing the web in search of perhaps a soccer game to watch, or football, depending on where you're from, are actually peons and pawns in a vast army of resources, all standing at the ready to do the biddings of their masters, the bad guys. And they use these resources to launch attack, attacks on the really big whales. And that's you guys. That's financial organizations. So they use this platform to launch anything from click fraud campaigns to lucrative denial of service attacks to harvest data about your users or perhaps launch their latest phishing campaign. This is a serious problem. And as banks try to evolve and come up with new security measures in order to heighten their security posture and help their customers, one of the ways that many organizations have chosen to go with is called multi-factor authentication. Now, if you guys here in the room have not heard about it, I would have been concerned because most of the banks and other technology companies in the world are using it. And it's a great way. You send a random code generated for a limited time by text message so it's out of band to your customer. The only problem is the, cust the clients also know how to get on your customer's phones. And they've come up with very clever ways to do so, like simply asking. This is what this Facebook security notice does. It claims that unlawful attempts to gain access to your account had happened, and the notice urges the user to quickly download and install an application for their Android device with a security token generator that's going to help them against the threats. The only problem is this application doesn't have much to do with Facebook. In reality, it's yet another malicious app designed by the bad guys with one goal in mind, hijacking the text messages you send your customers in an effort to make them more secure. And so the tables have turned. The criminals are innovating faster than most of us. And the recent development is the iDroid bot that had actually used a crowdfunding website in order to finance the development efforts. Uh, yeah, well, well, I'm all for crowdfunding, don't get me wrong, but when it finances malware, we have a problem. And this bit of malicious mobile malware is supposedly the Swiss knife of such attacks. It can infect both Android devices and iPhones. It can steal credit card information directly from the phone. And it can even drain the digital wallet accounts installed on the phone whether they're by Visa, Yandex, or other brands. So this is a scary reality indeed. And once you go down the rabbit hole and further into the underground, you learn that even the alternative cryptocurrency ecosystem, still getting its bearings in the world, also has its own criminals. And there, are, there is a multitude of new threats to that new ecosystem. Anything from Bitcoin mining malware to attacks on the blockchain infrastructure, infiltrations into the Bitcoin exchanges, or sometimes attacks on people's personal wallets. And so while the cryptocurrency ecosystem is fast growing and fast moving, the criminals are once again faster. So at this, uh, at this time, I'd like us to take a moment and wake up and smell the coffee. The reality is that the bad guys are extremely motivated and undeterred. And they are not afraid to use new technology, new business models, and new vectors to get at what they want. If you are in retail, they will go after your supply chain and then into your point of sale network. If you are an online platform for trading or an exchange hub, 
they will target you and your users for years in order to get what they want. Or let's say you're an online marketplace. They would go after your employees in order to gain access to millions of user accounts. These are all attacks that have already taken place. So if your organization has not yet been impacted, it might just be a question of time. So how can financial organizations deal with the changing nature of such dynamic threats? Well, one approach you could take is to simply keep calm and carry on. But it doesn't seem to be working. So today, I'd like to suggest a different approach. How about we take a moment to learn from how the bad guys are doing it? How about taking a cue from the hackers themselves and working hard to collaborate and innovate fearlessly? I think it's time the financial industry steps up its game, as it were, when it comes to collaborative security efforts. Work with security researchers and bloggers that know the criminal underground. Collaborate with technology vendors or intelligence providers. But more than anything, it's really time to work with each other. If you cannot share information about the threats, the attacks, and the techniques that the bad guys are using to target your bank, they'll be up next robbing the one down the corner. So it's time to share. And it's a good time to begin speaking about information sharing, because only last month, the Bank of England announced a new collaborative security framework designed at financial institutions. And I believe that more organizations around the world are going to follow in those footsteps. But information sharing and that sort of thing is not going to cut it. It's not, just not going to be enough. Yes, it is a crucial part of your strategy, but there's something more important. I think that financial organizations have simply got to invest more in security, but not just in security technologies, which is what most of them are doing. Invest in people and the capability of your security organization within the finance industry to adapt, to learn. Invest in cultivating the skills and know-how that the hackers have so that your organization can outsmart them and face them with a reinforced security posture. For the financial industry these days, almost every day brings new attacks and a new reality. And the industry itself has never before undergone so many conceptual and technological changes so quickly. So it is time for a paradigm shift when it comes to dealing with security threats. I don't believe that managing or accepting risk is acceptable in this day and age. It's time to get more proactive with innovation and collaboration. Because undoubtedly, as we move ahead, the creative criminals will be there. The question is, how will you choose to respond? Thank you. So great warning, Karen. But we're in a world where typically a financial institution will not want it publicized that they've been attacked. Your credit card company will absorb a payback, a chargeback. How do you change the culture to encourage this industry to be more transparent? That's a very valid question, David. So I'd like to respond to that with perhaps two suggestions on, on how to encourage that culture of openness with regards to the attacks taking place. One aspect is that these attacks are happening every day, every week. They are targeting every financial institution, from the small privately owned one to the big guys. And so pretty soon, it's going to be worth more to stop these attacks than to just live with them quietly and not tell anyone what's happened. And I believe that once these organizations begin to collaborate more freely within the constraints of perhaps a framework like the Bank of England has recently suggested, they will start seeing value, real value, bottom line value, with stopping these attacks before they happen. And once that becomes more lucrative than accepting the risk, there's going to be a change there. The second thing that I'd like to add to that is that right now there is a nascent alternative currency ecosystem out there. Now, up until a few years ago, 
the banking industry could say, well, we are more trustworthy than any digital money. But if the only differentiator is trust, then you really have to invest more in making your organization trustworthy. You heard the warning. Thank you, Karen Elazari. Thank you.